Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, my wife and I are going to talk about the pros and cons of living in Ghana. So we're going to start with the cons. And the first one is, you know, my guys, we have to go with the terrible roads. Oh, Ghana roads is so terrible. You need 4x4 to survive here. Thank God I got 4x4, but the roads are just terrible. When it rains, it's just it's, it's, it's insane. Since but it's not it's not bad everywhere you have places that are really developed that have smooth sailing roads and then you have the places that are slowly developing so the roads are a little bit on the bumpier side you got the dust going everywhere yeah. it can get a little crazy yeah so you don't enjoy that at all and the second one would be corruption yeah corruption ah oh, that can really stress you out so in ghana <laughs> When you get stopped by the police, just know that you're safe. However, you're gonna have to cough up a little something for the boys, okay? Something for the boys. That's the favorite line. I don't know if they learned that in training, but something for the boys. Something small, you know, for the boys. Yeah, and they're really gonna bother you. They're gonna try to get your license and check your booth and ask if you have a first aid kit. And what else do you need? Uh, what else did they, did they ask for? Reflect this. Do you need a, um, uh, what's the thing for fire, just in case of fire? Fire extinguisher, yeah. Fire extinguisher. I mean, if they want to get you to make a long story short, they will find something. So just cough it up. It's not much, you know, 50 CDs, which is like less than $5, will make them happy. And, but yeah, it's, yeah. it's not just the police, it's everywhere, you know. Some of them will go straight to the point and just ask for money, but some of them will. We'll try to waste your time. Yeah. Another place we experience corruption is... It's customs. 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 If you know about Ghana customs, whew, it, it's a lot. It's a lot. Um, so let's say you order a package through UPS. Once it gets to the airport area, that's where customs is. You go pick up your package. You have to uh, pay about 70 cities per package to pick it up. And then you gotta pay for customs. So they're gonna go through your stuff and see how much the value is and ask you a whole bunch of unnecessary questions and then come up with a random price. I don't I don't even know how they come up with this price, but this is the amount that you have to pay and it's always a ridiculous amount. It, it, it'll be about the same amount that you pay for the package. To make a long story short, you wanna avoid customs at all costs. You know, Just do door to door. Do door to door, shipment, you know, Try to avoid it. It's too stressful. It's too stressful. What we're going to do, I do not wish that on my worst enemy. And that is a story for another day. The third one is the lack of systems. And, you know, lack of systems, uh, you know, provides opportunity for people to take advantage of, you know, other people. Like the land issue, they are working on it, but the systems has to be in place because a lot of people are definitely, definitely, definitely suffering from lack of systems. And uh, yeah, that's definitely a con. Being in the real estate side of things, I, I, I've dealt with so much pain regarding lack of systems, especially with the land issue in Ghana, it's just crazy. It's the worst, it's the worst. Lack of systems, people can actually create jobs for themselves, right? So we have the land offs. And that's like people who are just, I don't even know what to call them, but they will show up when you're trying to build and you know, basically, their claim is they've been taking care of the land while, while you were away. And you just have to pay. I, I mean, there is, you just have to pay. You have to give them something because they're gonna bother you. And Not if you go for the police, of course, that's gonna cost you as well. So you really, you just gotta pay. And it's, it's almost like a norm. They created a job for themselves and uh, land guards. Okay, so apparently a lot of foods are imported here, like strawberries, broccoli, cheese. Oh my God, and I love cheese, but I had to cut that out down here because it is super expensive. You can get like a block of cheese this size, this thick for like, I think it's like a hundred cities, which is like $10, which is crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. I loved broccoli before I moved to Ghana, but I had to, you know, find other alternatives because uh, the price of the broccoli is like I can literally go to a nice restaurant and have a nice meal, you know, and socialize. Just doesn't make sense to me. So I love my broccoli, but when I do go back to the states, I can always enjoy my broccoli. Just not in Ghana. No Amazon Prime, and that is ooh, that pains me because I am an Amazon girl. But 
That's another thing that I had to cut out um, because you're not getting Amazon Prime here. They do have an alternative, which is um, something called Gigi, but we'll get into that later. Um, yeah, no Amazon Prime, so you can't get your books, you can't get your, you know, your little items or whatever you need in like two days. Um, the convenience is not there, basically. Right, and uh, for, for me, the books, you know, I buy my books uh, in the traffic, so I gotta be lucky to find like a nice title, whereas when I was in the States, I'm watching an interview or something, and you know, they suggest a nice book, I just go online and order it. Like, I don't have that here, and that pays me greatly. Another con is, I know Ghana it could be tough, but people just put so much pressure on you because they think you've got all the money in the world, uh, they don't know that everybody has their own problems, and they just expect you to you know, keep giving them money, and when they charge you, just by looking at the kind of person you are, the price is totally different, <laughs> totally different uh, compared to what they would give it to a local or somebody else who, you know, don't, you don't have it, they ain't got it. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that some Ghanaians have this mindset of like, when they see someone doing good and they this person seems to have money, it's like, oh, this person has a lot of money, I need to get some. Instead of, oh, this person seems to be doing well, I wanna do that for myself, how can I, how can I get there? Yeah, yeah. So that's 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 one thing that you know, I strongly, strongly wish Ghanaians were like, if you see somebody who's you know, doing good, you should instead try to, try to understand how they got there so you can at, at, at least learn something from them and one day you could be there as well rather than just try to get like quick fix something small and just move on without thinking about what that person has to go through to get to where they are. But the last time I checked, nobody was really, really, really born rich. If somebody was born rich, their father or grandfather had to go through it before they got to where they are. So. Everybody can get rich, everybody can get money, but you just have to buy certain things and our people tend to you know, ignore that and just go for, can I get some of yours? And the last one for us on the con list is people are not punctual at all and they will not call in to let you know that you are running late. They will just waste your time basically. Um, then that goes for workers and you know, trying to you know, go to an event or something, it's always like people are not punctual. So. I mean, it doesn't really bother us much because we know we know the deal and we try to work around it, but it is a con, something that we are getting used to. Um, there are two types of people. Um, there is someone who values time and sees it as something that's very precious, you know, like don't waste my time, time is money. And then there are people who are like, time is just like a flowing thing. Like it doesn't really matter. Three o'clock, five o'clock, I'll show up whenever. Um, so <laughs> it's annoying and unfortunate when we run into people that we're trying to work with that do not really care about time because organization when it comes to work is very important. Absolutely. That's it for the cons and now we're going to get into the pros. Yeah, the pros <laughs> and why we are here. So one is money goes a long way in Ghana, right? When you change your dollars. It goes a long way, you know, you can do a lot. Go out, we go out a lot, like three times a week, two times a week, and we couldn't do that in the States because it's just too expensive. And we go and have these nice meals at you know, nice places, and it just was so expensive in New York. So that's definitely a pro for us. Yeah, it's cheaper to get your, um, it's cheaper to get food here, it's cheaper to go out, it's cheaper to get your nails done, your hair done, your toes, all beauty services are a lot cheaper here, which is a good thing for me. Um, and also the customer service, oh my gosh, amazing, amazing. Like they also serve you wine, they take the, the time and massage. It's not like in New York where you get your five minute pedicure, boom, you're out, next person. Like, no, they really take their time here and I really love that. In the beauty industry, in the beauty industry. In, in the, the beauty, beauty industry. industry. Yeah. So another pro is Ghana is very peaceful and very calm. And it's just, you really feel the inner peace, you know? Um, everything is so relaxed and you just, you have your peace of mind and we love that. Yeah, coming from a really fast paced environment, you know, New York, everybody's stressed out, 
hustling, trying to get to work, trying to make some money so they can pay their rent. And it's just so tiring. You know, here, life is much slower, whether you're like currently working or not. You know, you don't have to worry about paying rent and meeting deadlines and like all the things that cause you stress and anxiety and sometimes depression. Like, yeah, you really don't have to worry about it's it. It's not like it's non existent here, but it's just like so, like. Yeah, it's, it's really. It exists, but it's not. It's not out there it's like. Not so much pressure. States. It's not so much pressure. Yeah, is what I'm trying yeah. To say. It's not out there like this. States. People are more calm and happier, really, just by looking at people's faces. People are very happy here. Uh, approval for me is part of the reason why we are here is the countless business opportunities. As I've been saying in my previous videos, Ghana is developing at such an insane rate. So there is a lot of business opportunity for entrepreneurs. My wife is very entrepreneur in the beauty space. She just actually uh, started her company selling Brazilian wigs. Pretty Palace with an I, not a Y on Instagram. If you're looking for luxury Brazilian wigs, all lengths, all yep. styles, I got you. Pretty Palace, P-R-E-T-T-I underscore Palace. I'll put a link in the description below. Another pro is, uh, the organic food that we have out here. There is a lot of, everything is so fresh and healthy. You know, there's not a lot of chemicals in the food. And you know, you can just, you're gonna lose weight by not even working out because you know, we don't have all the extra fertilizers and all this stuff, you know, it's, it's, it's more healthier. It's a healthy environment with regards to the food and the food is organic and it's not expensive. When we were in New York, you try to eat organic food, like twice the amount, it's very right? expensive. Twice, yeah. mm -hmm. twice the amount to get organic, but you don't have to deal with that idea. Yeah, and you just feel better too. Like, I remember in New York, I used to feel tired all the time, and like, ugh, like I just felt blocked. But here, when I wake up, I eat, and like, I don't automatically get the itis, like, oh my gosh, I need to go to sleep. Like, I, I feel good, absolutely. And you can grow your own food as we do in the backyard. And uh, we definitely have a better lifestyle down here. As my wife and I, we were uh, living in a one bedroom apartment in New York and the rent was very expensive. Uh, but now we live in a big house, you know, a lot of rooms, two living rooms, it's huge. You guys seen my house on the channel. So it's literally an upgrade, huge upgrade for us. And our car is nicer. Uh, we go out more often, uh, just better lives overall, you know, less stress and we are much, much, much happier. Yeah, and it feels so good to have so much space coming from New York. If you if you've ever been to New York or if you live in New York, you know the apartments are really tiny, like super tiny. Like you turn around, here's a kitchen. You turn around, here's a bedroom. You turn around. The police, wow, you know something small for the boys is the is the motto. Um, they are very friendly, and you know there's a lot of funny stories. You know you don't feel threatened by the police. They are cool people. Just yeah, something small for the boys. They actually, actually go out of their way to make you laugh because they they want that little something for the boys. Yeah, yeah. So you don't feel threatened by the police at all. It's kind of like when you see the police, it's like you know there is no like oh I'm scared of the police. No, 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 no. So that's definitely a pro here. As you know, I've had my fair share with American police, so I definitely appreciate that here. It feels so good to not have to worry about rent. Oh my gosh. Paying rent, it's like it's so expensive and it feels like it's you pay it every month, but it feels like you pay it every other day. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. And uh it's it just puts so much pressure on you, you know, to perform and most of the money is going out to the landlord. We do not have to worry about that. On top of it, if we were in the States and we actually had a house, we still have to pay like property taxes and that could be very high, especially for a house like this. So we are very, very, very happy that we don't have to deal with that. The only thing we gotta pay is water bill, which is not much at all, like you know, $10 a month. And then electricity, because we have our solar, that's not much at all. As I mentioned in my previous video, it's like $50. And that's the only thing we literally have to worry about in this house. And the gas is something that we don't even worry about because we fill it up every six months and that's like $30. So we basically have no bills, you know. It's, it's amazing, we love it. All right, guys, so I think this concludes uh, everything that we wanted to talk about regarding pros and cons in Ghana. Overall, our pros are ways of cons, and that's why we're here, and that's why we love it. And we just want to share, you know, our pros and cons with you guys. What's our con might be somebody's pro, what's our pro might be somebody's con, but this is our opinion and our opinion only. 
And if we missed out on anything that's maybe a pro for you or a con for you, comment down below. We want to know what your thoughts are. Yes, and if you're not subscribed to the channel already, kindly do so. Like this video, hit the bell for the notification, and until next time, my friends, be legendary. Peace.